Hello, I'm Adi. And I'm Johan. I'm a programmer, trainer and coach. And I'm a technical coach. And today we want to talk about uh, cognitive biases. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Which one are we going to talk about today, Adi? We chose the bandwagon effect and I'm going to read the definition from here from this poster. The probability of one person adopting a belief increases based on the number of people who hold that belief. So how yeah. is this good and how is this bad? Um, well, it's good. Uh, like everybody else, it, it's good in some sense. Um, and this one is good, I guess, because it makes uh, decisions easy. Uh, just choose whatever everyone else chooses. Uh, same car, same everything. Uh, and you're good. Mm-hmm. Can't because, be that bad. because the cars are more or less the same quality and on this type of, of products, it, I think it works well. But what? how, how about a, a bad uh, situation? Yeah, so I mean, you're not going to think about what you're choosing. So you, you're probably going to choose quite often the, the wrong thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, with you choosing it for because everyone else is choosing it, that means that you're going to have some chance. You have to have some chance in order for it to be the right decision, right? Mm -hmm. And we have these examples from software that we we talked about uh, that it's like JavaScript frameworks, always choose a new shiny thing. Yeah. Or or you, you, the, the, the Java, uh, Java Enterprise, everybody needed to use that. Yeah, 10 years ago, yeah. Yes. So or with other things like frameworks and they're not necessarily the best, it's just that they are the most used, right? Yeah, and with JavaScript, I think that they are the most recent, <laughs> more mm. or less. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and then this whole ecosystem starts becoming a mess because... Um, you have all these frameworks uh, one on top of the other if you have older JavaScript code. Yeah, yeah. But um, I guess it gives you a good reason to rewrite your software every now and then yeah. so that it doesn't decay too much, right? <laughs> you, you become very busy. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I also see the thing that happens a lot right now when the backend side is that everyone wants to do uh, microservices. Mm-hmm. And in the most cases that I see, uh, I don't think that it's a very good idea to do microservices. A good monolith would really do the thing and, and be much cheaper and we don't need that scalability and so on. Mm-hmm. And in some cases, it's 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 really not well done. Mm-hmm. So that you actually get no benefit from it, just cost, just cost. Yeah, but it's still the new thing. So you need to do it because everybody uses microservices, right? Yeah. I know it's better, you know. Yeah. Uh, well, you still lead to the same problem uh, because uh, m- designing a modular system is still difficult, right? Either with microservices or as a monolith. Yeah. I, I think yeah. Y- you maybe have even more problems because you need more knowledge about infrastructure and um, yeah. asynchronous things and so on, right? Yes, and. Uh, Uptime is gonna probably gonna be worse, or it's mathematically gonna be worse unless you really change the way you do architecture. Like if you build mm-hmm. a message-based system, but most of us um, don't do that. Uh, we just sp- try to split the monolith. Or, or the worst case scenario, you just have many microservices all hitting the same b- database, uh, or or have a microservices per application layer. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's just going to bring only problems, no benefits. And, and like, unfortunately, it's, it's kind of the way that we think of systems often. And so that's how we actually do microservices. Mm-hmm. And it's, um, it's, um, it has a really bad effect. And I think it really costs the industry a lot. Yeah, that's true. I think there's a cost of learning. You need to put that somehow there yeah, yeah. Uh, i saw this uh, quite often in change management when working with different organizations and uh, there's this situation quite often when people don't want to change because they have been doing things in a certain way 
and then but it can also be useful right because you you can have the new shiny thing like with javascript but in, in an organization everybody needs wants to do the new thing so then it helps you yeah 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 if you want to make people change then then definitely the bandwagon effect can can help you if you want them to change to something which is kind of hype or Mm -hmm. or or the majority of people is, are doing it that then it can definitely help yeah so what's guess, our sorry yeah i i guess uh that's what's happening with scrum right now it's very yeah. easy to make a, uh, an organization try to adopt agile uh because everyone else is doing it and mm -hmm. and i think not not necessarily a good thing but i think that safe is really uses this mm -hmm. uh it's adopted a lot and 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 it's not because it's the best system but um, a lot of people are a lot of players are doing it yeah so what's our conclusion about this the bandwagon in fact well i guess it's um you have to be uh, aware of the problem and if you're aware of the problem then you know that almost all decisions are uh, influenced by this bias mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, you cannot uh, counter it for all decisions because it takes time. However, for the important decisions, then you can uh, say to yourself that, okay, I'm, I'm uh, subject to the bandwagon effect. Uh, so how can I, uh, well, we can fight that by obtaining information about the choice that you're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so think about it, it's costly, but when it, when you really need to take a decision, think if it's your choice or if you're, you're just in a bandwagon, right? Yeah. Okay, that was right. great. Yeah, thank you, Adi. Thank you.